brought to you by Express Care Health and Skin Center. Get in, get out, get better. Hoppa day, welcome back our healthy to our Healthy Living Edition of KUM News Extra with Dr. Yit Kalam. We are talking about anxiety and stress. Now let's get to some of our viewer questions. Someone writes, are anxiety disorders more common in men or women? <laughs> well, we know the answer. More, um, women are more prone to this. It's about a ratio of three to two. And uh, the reasons for that are probably multiple. Um, one thing I would mention too is that people self-medicate their anxiety. You know, they drink or they smoke or um, they have other unhealthy habits to take care of it. So sometimes we don't know that's what's really going on behind the scenes. Okay. Marcy from Chalon Puzzle writes, are stress and infertility linked? They are. It's a terrible vicious cycle. Um, so when people are experiencing infertility, difficulty getting pregnant, they will become very, very anxious. Then that will affect their hormones and make it even more difficult to get pregnant. And that makes them even more anxious. And it goes around and around in a circle. So as part of infertility treatment or the, the, the patient time of trying to get pregnant, it is important to control your mental health and do the best you can to uh, stay peaceful. Ken from Sinahania asks, how is an anxiety disorder diagnosed? Um, well, actually, there's a great big book um, that the psychiatrists use, use called the DSM-4, and there's a whole list of cr criteria there, that, uh, like a checklist. Um, so, for example, an anxiety disorder would mean persistent, um, ongoing, and constant worry about everything for X amount of time, at least two weeks, including these other symptoms like inability to sleep and uh, uh, interfering with your mental functioning and, and um, concentration problems, um, a whole list. So when you go visit your doctor, they go through that with you. And you would visit your, you mentioned a psychiatrist, so do you, when you have anxiety and stress, do you go to a psychiatrist or do you go to your doctor? Well, you can actually see th three different types of people. You could see your family doctor, you could see a psychiatrist, you could also see a psychologist for therapy to help you. Okay, uh, Leilani from Agate writes, can stress be the contributing factor to my back aches and insomnia? Yes, we kind of talked about that, definitely. Sometimes we don't even want to face what's really going on in our lives. And so our body will talk to us and give us back pain or headaches or sore throats or whatever that is actually a manifestation of your stress. And so sometimes if you take a step back and say, what's really going on in my life, in my job, in my relationship, in my uh, personal life, um, you may discover some things that are unpleasant but helpful to talk about or think about. Can the effects of stress lower your immune system responses? That's from PJ from Dedadil. Mm, that's a funny thing, yeah. A stress can initially first boost your immune system because you're fighting for whatever st survival problem that you've got going on mm -hmm. in your life. But long-term and chronic stress can certainly wear you down and can lower your immune system to the point where you do get sick and, um, and, and, and get serious sicknesses. So it is very important to, again, control the stress and, and manage it well in your life. Humor is a great way to manage your stress. If you watch a silly movie or tell a funny joke, it will lighten your load right away. So it's true, laughter is the best medicine. It is. <laughs> and, you know, we've got Thanksgiving coming up, and uh, a lot of times we hear something called the holiday blues. Mm -hmm. How can somebody avoid that? You know, I think the best way to avoid it, Mindy, is to focus on gratitude. Um, no matter what difficulties you're facing in your life, you can find something to be thankful for. And, of course, that's the, re the reason behind Thanksgiving. But you may have so many problems in your life, but still you can take a step back and say, thank you, I'm so thankful that I have my vision, that I have my hearing, that I have my family, or that I had a family, if you don't have one anymore. Uh, there are so many things that you can find to be grateful for if you just take a moment. You might write them down and, and refer to them when you're hitting the blues. Trying to stay connected with other people. Many people would love to take you in. If you, have, if you can't think of who they are, just extend yourself and, and they'll reach out to you as well. Well, we're definitely thankful for you. Happy Thanksgiving Thank to you, you and Happy your Thanksgiving. family. And, of course, the best way to treat anxiety and stress, again, laughter is, a, is the best medicine. Um, so just remember those going into the holiday season. Thank you so much, Dr. Lam, for joining us. We will see you again next week when we will be discussing indigestion and acid reflux after eating all that turkey. So if you've got a question, make sure to post your question on KUM.com or on our Facebook page. Stay with us.